Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new games in the Atari Recharged series, including Asteroids, Black Widow, and Centipede. I'd like to thank Atari for sponsoring today's video. Atari has been releasing their first wave of games in their Atari Recharge series, and they've been doing a really good job at giving these classic games a new twist without them straying too far away from the originals. All of the games have a really cool neon look to them that aim to replicate a vector style. The games are available on everything from the Switch, PS4, Epic Game Store, Xbox, and of course the Atari VCS. I'm playing on PC through Steam. I should really play these on Switch as well because they're great for like pick up and play games where you just want to play something in bed or you know like you're on the go when you have some downtime. The game itself was made by Adam Vision Studios that had previously done other games with this sort of style, such as Ding Dong XL. It's a simple Pong style game with a new flair to it. The music in these was done by composer Megan McDuffie who also worked on River City Girls and a lot of other things. It fits the game perfectly as it has a dark, techno vibe that just doesn't get old. So let's start out by talking about Asteroids Recharged. This was just released on the 14th of this month, so it's the newest game in their series of recharged games. The first thing I noticed about this version of Asteroids is how although it's new and neon looking, it still has that classic vector look that I love so much about the original. The way it glows on top of the gridded background just looks awesome, and I think they did a really good job in making it look aesthetically pleasing. It's so much easier playing Asteroids with analog sticks as opposed to the original arcade version where you're controlling your ship using buttons. I always had a hard time with that. I have personally spent more time with Mindstorm, the packing game on the Vectrex. It's not often I come in contact with a real Asteroids machine, but I have a Vectrex system at home and this is the first game most anyone would play. It's a clone of Asteroids and just like its arcade original, it uses buttons to move. And it's tough to control. This is a game where you have to make sure not to make too many wild movements. It's all about subtle movements. With Asteroids Recharged, what I enjoy the most about this is all the cool special attacks you gain from killing certain UFOs. Some UFOs will shoot and kill you, but others will give you sweet power-ups like a spread shot, sideways shot, drill guns, and even a deflector shield. All the power-ups only last for a little while though, but it's easy to see how long you have since there's glowing pink bars on the top and bottom of the screen that shrink in size as you run out of time. It's super fun to try and get a better score so you can have your name on the leaderboards. You can do this online or locally. There's also a co-op feature where you can work together with a friend to take down the UFO scum together. While playing co-op, I noticed you can get a really cool little heart power-up if one player dies, and if you manage to grab it, you can bring them back into the game. This is a feature in the other two games I'll be talking about too. I thought this was pretty cool and it's not in the solo game. If the main game isn't enough for you, there are a ton of different little challenge games to go through, which all have different objectives. Kill 90 small asteroids. You can't teleport, but you can still get power-ups. Like the title of the challenge, you just need to take out 90 small asteroids as fast as you can. In Deadly Trap, you have to take out 50 UFOs. It's pretty easy to keep a deflector shield so you don't get hit by their attacks, but if that power-up runs out, you better get that item again quick. In Powerful Stuff, you have to hit the score of 5,500. Now, the challenge in this is you want to try and get to that score in the least amount of time that you can. And there are a ton of other challenges you can play from, but this is just to give you a little taste of what you can expect. Next up, let's take a look at Black Widow. Apparently, even super scary spiders still need to worry about cash, and it is vital to you kicking ass in this twin stick shooter. Kill an enemy, take their money, and add it to your spider web fund. Once you charge up your web attack enough, you can use it to take out a bunch of enemies at once with a spider web that crosses the whole screen. And it rules. The game is simple. Kill the other bugs before they kill you. The yellow wasps in this game give me the heebie-jeebies, so I like to take them out first. You don't want to stay too close to the edge since that's where the enemies come from, but that can be easier said than done. You also have to make sure to push the little cocoons off your web before they hatch, or they will cause a problem. One of the toughest parts to this game are the bugs that explode. You have to keep your distance or you're a toast. Hope there's no bugs on my toast. 
There are a ton of challenges to unlock and they get pretty insane. I like the one where you have to kill a lot of lightning bugs or try to reach a specific score as fast as you can. There is a ton of replay value in this game and if you're into multi-directional shooters, then I highly recommend it. Lastly, let's talk about another Atari iconic classic, Centipede. This one is interesting because the original game was not vector-based graphics. The original arcade Centipede was raster, so Centipede fans might find the neon look more surprising than Asteroids or Black Widow. Besides the look of the game, one of the main changes is the fact you can now get a number of different power-ups. The explosive shot is nice because you can take out entire centipedes in one shot, and it also takes out large clusters of mushrooms. Those get annoying. The leaves in the background are a nice touch to give you a subconscious sense that you're in a tree or a field of grass. But in space, of course. The game can be played with a controller or a trackball controller if you happen to be playing on PC. If you have this on Switch, the regular control stick works well enough. Just make sure to go into the settings and adjust the mouse sensitivity so that you can fine tune your movements. The original game had trackball controls and many people will probably want to replicate that experience. So if you want that, you'll want to get the PC version. Like others, there are a lot of great power-ups here. One of the power-ups I enjoy is the fear. This one works as a screen clear, but a cute little ghost comes out and scares all the enemies away. Boo! And the challenges here are a lot of fun and they get pretty crazy. The one that stood out to me was the one where you have to avoid shooting the green poisonous mushrooms. That is a lot easier said than done. So all in all, I think it's really cool that Atari is making these and I'm loving everything in their Recharge series so far. I really hope they give Crystal Castles the Recharge treatment. So what other Atari classics would you like to see in the Recharge series? Let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.